Yes, you read the video's title correctly. And I know there's going to be a lot of angry knee-jerk responses from people who just see the title and don't even watch the video, but for the love of the Elder Gods, just hear me out, let me explain. There's a reason for this video's topic. And just to make sure I know the people commenting have watched the video, I'm going to include a code word at the end of this video. If your comment does not include the code word, I will assume you haven't watched the whole video and have heard what I have to say. So, first, let me digress. Despite the fact that I quite like Mortal Kombat as a whole, MK11 came out before I had rediscovered my dormant love for the franchise. But when Mortal Kombat 11 was in development, I saw a press release that stated they were done making all the female characters leather-clad titty monsters. I felt the same way about this then as I do now. It's something that I'm of two minds about. On one hand, whatever. If I wanted to get my jingles, there are about a billion better places to go than an official release. There was only so far they were able to go with Mortal Kombat without pushing the age rating to adults only, which would never happen. So in that regard, I was ambivalent towards the change. But on the other hand, I questioned why they even felt the need to do it. It seemed very performative to me, because why in a series where you can chop people up in a million different ways and see all the gory details, would scantily clad women be the line you draw? You know what I mean? It just seemed like a deliberate attempt at good press on a topic that seemed laughable when you look at the context. I think it's just a reinforcement of the dichotomy of our society. We can deal with violence better than we can deal with sexuality. You can show all the blood and guts you want, but God help you if you show a nipple. And somehow that attitude bleeds into things like Mortal Kombat, where disingenuous is an understatement. Because personally, looking into it, I think the violence is actually the bigger issue that needs to be addressed. And I know what you're all going to say. What the hell are you talking about? Mortal Kombat is all about the violence. And granted, that's true. Mortal Kombat became popular off the back of its mature content. So popular, in fact, that it forced games to regulate and create a rating system. And I'm not saying this as somebody who's squeamish, either. I friggin' love ultraviolence. It's one of my favorite things in creative works. I'm a sucker for gory excess. I'm not sure what that says about me, but hey, we're all a bit weird. But it's only recently that the violence in Mortal Kombat has become so gratuitous that it's become a bit of a problem. As a fairly recent fan of Mortal Kombat, this is something that's become very clear to me as I've looked into it, because in doing various bits of research, I've come to discover that Netherrealm is kind of an awful place to work, allegedly. Toxic environment, crunch, yada yada yada. But the part that depresses me the most are the stories of employees at Netherrealm being diagnosed with PTSD and other such mental disorders due to the violent content in the games they make. This is old news now, but I still feel it worth addressing. You see, as technology has progressed, it's meant that Mortal Kombat has had to continually raise the bar as far as gratuitous violence and gore. Because yes, that's what the series is known for, so they have to go further and further every time so they don't look like they're stagnating. It makes sense in theory, but that combined with the ever-present inching towards total graphical realism has resulted in NetherRealm employees having to look up detailed videos and pictures of grievous bodily harm and use that as inspiration to model and animate every detailed and clinical deconstruction of the human body. You can see how that would be traumatizing to some people, and that is certainly the case. It's resulted in at least one person at NetherRealm Studios reportedly having a lessening quality of life for the sake of their job. And in my opinion, if one person, even one, has to suffer, then it's not worth it. I wanted to bring this up right off the bat because I feel that this is the smoking gun of the topic. This story has been disputed in various cases, but I really don't see the benefit in making this up. The fact that people are suffering for Mortal Kombat to be what it is, quite frankly, should not be necessary. Especially when you take into consideration that it wasn't until MK9 that things even started to become this over the top. When you look at the fatalities of Yor going back as far as the first few games, and even up to the end of the Midway era, most fatalities were over in a flash and weren't excessively brutal. Some of them even got into the realms of parody, like Quan Chi ripping off your leg and beating you to death with it. Or in Mortal Kombat 3, people exploding with three skeletons worth of bones. That's so absurd, it's funny. And even then, if you were to demake a lot of the more gruesome aspects of the modern games into the early digitized sprite era, or even into the 3D era, it still wouldn't be as bad. Because on one hand, sprites and crude 3D models have enough separation from reality that you can't have the same detail that you would in a more contemporary game. Therefore, you wouldn't have to do the same amount of rigorous research in order to achieve that detail. A complex sprite animation or crude 3D animation is never going to be as shocking as a real or almost real equivalent. And also, I'd imagine a skilled person could probably make these sprite animations or these 3D animations in a couple of days max. So even if somebody was disturbed by this back in the day, they probably wouldn't have to look at it for very long. But with modern technology, it takes weeks and an entire team to achieve these complex CGI animations. 
These animations don't just get made themselves in a vacuum. I'd imagine that if you're looking at these for weeks on end, shooting for total realism and don't have the context of doing it for fun like the average player might, it probably gets burnt into your skull in all the wrong ways. And for somebody who's not prepared for that, yeah, it's definitely not good for you. And I'm sure that some people might say that these developers need to know what they're getting into before accepting the job with Netherrealm, but guess what? Sometimes a job is a job and you can't get picky. I have a friend who graduated from some game design school a while back, I don't remember which one, and he's had interviews with four or five big game developers, including Rockstar Games. Despite getting that far that many times, none have offered him an actual position. So what that tells me is that finding work in the industry, especially for a newcomer, is a pain in the ass. So some of these people probably just took the offer of work at Netherrealm because they were the first or possibly only studio to offer them a job. If you're just trying to get by in the industry you've been trained in, you don't deserve to be scarred for life. It's not about knowing what you're getting into, it's about being able to survive. And sometimes you need to take a job that you wouldn't necessarily take otherwise, or don't fit optimally at, in order to survive. So even if this person or people already had pre-existing issues that were there before they took the job, and this story is the development simply worsening those pre-existing conditions, that still comes back to the fact that it's entirely possible they didn't necessarily want the job at that specific studio. And even if that were the case, it's not a matter of whether or not they should have taken the job, it's a matter of whether or not people are suffering to make these games, and that's simply unacceptable regardless of any way you swing it. That's the end of the discussion for me and I don't think it should be an unpopular take. I think that's just basic human decency. The same thing applies for The Last of Us 2, where similar stories came out. That was another case of people suffering to make a game. It doesn't matter which studio it is, it's horrible regardless. I think that kind of brings into question whether or not this is all necessary. You know what I mean? The escalation of these things happen because of an attitude of, we can do it, so why shouldn't we? Nobody ever really stops to consider if it's really a necessary inclusion for the end product. Would the depiction of intestines being ripped out piece by piece be the thing that pushes a 9 out of 10 into a 10 out of 10 for anybody? And while it may not appear like it, it's entirely possible to be brutal without being so over the top that you have to subject your employees to these harsh conditions. Let's just take a look at Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, a game where the fatalities have a bit of a mixed reception, but it's a good showcase of potential creativity. In that game, the heroes have what are called heroic brutalities, moves that aren't going to kill you, but are going to end a fight no doubt. Some of these were kind of lame, but Green Lanterns was one of the best fight ending moves not only in the game, but in the series. He grabs you with the Green Lantern ring and crushes you in a bubble. It's brutal, it's quick, it's effective, and most importantly, it's not gratuitous. Not a single drop of blood is spilt, not a single limb severed, but it gets its point across incredibly and would make even the most jaded player wince without falling into the same issues that recent games have fallen into. Garrus in Mortal Kombat 11 could have had a fatality like this, crushing you in his sands. And honestly, I think the whole heroic brutality thing is something that Netherrealm should really go back to. Back when Mortal Kombat really only had the tower mode and didn't try for any more characterization, it might have fit for every character to wantonly kill their opponents in ridiculously over-the-top ways. But now that you're attempting more in-depth storytelling, it just seems odd to me that Johnny Cage would be so keen to rip open someone's chest cavity and do a parody of The Shining. A character's fatality should be more in line with their personality, rather than just being gory for the sake of being gory. People like Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Jax Briggs, Liu Kang, and even Raiden should have this in mind. It makes sense from a fight psychology standpoint for them to have quote-unquote fatalities that incapacitate their opponents in brutal ways but doesn't kill them, because they're the good guys. They should be above killing unless absolutely necessary. I mean, that's how it goes down in the story most times. How many times has Kano canonically skirted death because of this? It makes sense to me if Jax Briggs, for example, whom is a special force operative whose moveset is modeled after professional wrestling, incapacitates his opponents using something like a burning hammer breaks their neck, maybe knocks them out, but doesn't kill them. Or how about this? Shao Kahn broke Kotal Kahn's back using what is basically a leaping torture rack. I refuse to call it a rack attack. That could be a good heroic brutality for Jax, just with a little bit more fanfare to set it up. Then there's Raiden, for example, who can use lightning in any number of creative ways to incapacitate but not kill. Or how about Lu friggin' Kang? His cartwheel uppercut combo from the first game is arguably the first heroic brutality in the series. I think it's an interesting creative challenge to retain the characteristically brutal nature of the series without being gratuitous. That way the developers don't need to suffer in the future. And even the characters who would kill, you don't have to be so crazy with it. For example, Kotal Kahn. I always thought that one grapple attack where he bathes in your blood is a bit too unsurvivable to just be a standard attack. 
What if you were to alter that to just make it his fatality? Or if you want to get a little bit more ridiculous, what if he summons a sunbeam to bake you alive until you melt or explode into giblets Ark of the Covenant style until nothing remains but a skeleton? If you do it right, you won't need to model anything that will require research into the less pleasant parts of the anatomy. Or even Shao Kahn, who relishes in brutalizing his opponents, could stand to be a little bit more to the point. Like, you know what he does to Garrus during the Aftermath DLC? Just repeatedly hits his head until it's a pile of giblets? That could very easily be a straightforward and to the point fatality. Or if you want to be a little bit more ridiculous with it, how about he sticks you with a spear and then sticks the spear into the ground to tee you up, then uses his hammer like a golf club and your head like a golf ball so we can speedrun The Last of Us 2? Huh. Second mention of that game in this video. I must just have it on my mind. Once again, finishers that are brutal but don't require you to model grievous bodily harm on the level of what we've been seeing since 2011. The problem is, though, Netherrealm has gone so far that if they don't have something equal to or greater than what they've already had previously in the next game, the average person would look at it and say, what the hell, this is lame. Because the average person isn't looking into the context of why things are operating in a certain way. Netherrealm has unfortunately poisoned the well, so it might be too little too late. But I still think it's worth a try. To be clear, I say all of this while also being someone who enjoys ultraviolence. God of War is my favorite franchise, and God of War is gratuitous violence, the series. But for me, it's all about the context. If Mortal Kombat could exist as it is right now and have everyone be happy and content, then that would be the ideal universe to occupy. But I would also like $10,000, a shot of whiskey, and a license to kill. But unfortunately, some things just aren't in the cards. And for better or worse, I don't see things changing anytime soon. As much as I preach, it's not going to change anything, unfortunately. But a man can dream. And a man can attempt to change the world but a man should also probably get some rest. So now that I'm done here, the code word is legislature, because that was the word that a random word generator came up with. So do you agree with my take? Do you think I'm some loser idiot who needs to stay in his lane? Whatever the case, leave me a comment telling me what you think. I'm sure they'll be civil. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. And if you want to support me financially, please consider pledging to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards like these people here. And a special thanks to Raf and Anutsu for going above and beyond. I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Peace.